Hello. Hello, everyone. A very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, welcome to the session of M Finance, Avoiding Security Pitfalls, Secure Mobile Application Development, Deployment, and Management. As you know, in today's world, secure mobile development has become a key issue and also a key solution. It can become a business enabler and also it can help transform business. As you know, the time to take in to create an entire application is substantial and to make sure that when it hits the market, it runs smoothly is also key. So to remove the hiccups and make sure it, there's a seamless experience, secure mobile development is becoming very key issue at the moment. So for the same uh, topic, we have our esteemed panelists joining us today with and the session moderator with Dr. Shiram. So it gives me great pressure to invite on stage. First, uh, Mr. Manoj Nayak, CISO, SPLF Insurance. Can we have Mr. Manoj on stage, please? All right. I'll be also introducing the rest of the panel. Uh, we have Ms. Babita, BP, CISO, CSP Bank Limited. And following that, we have uh, Dr. Pradeep T. KV, Assistant Professor, CRO, Advanced Institute of Mathematics, Statistics, and Computer Science. And finally, we have our uh, esteemed moderator, Dr. Shiram, CEO, CCOA Telangana, DSCI. Um, uh, we'd like to welcome all of us to this a particular session and um, Dr. Shira, I will hand it over to you to take the session forward and thank you everyone for joining us for this session. Okay. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 So now uh, I have on uh, stage with me Professor Pradeep T and uh, Mr. Manoj Nayak. Has he joined? Hello. Shall I get started? All right. So we have two more panelists joining us shortly. And in the meantime, I will just get started. OK. So mobile finance, M finance. So the topic of today's panel discussion is M finance, avoiding security pitfalls, secure mobile applications, which covers development, deployment, and management. Uh, this is quite an expensive topic because this is a mobile first economy that we have and mobile phones face a variety, a plethora of threats far more than that of what we have with the desktops and laptops and the like. Uh, there are several reasons for this. First of all, in this mobile world, we see that wireless networks are hacker friendly. So unlike websites, mobile apps do not properly, may not properly encrypt information. That means you may find that there, if, if, if we are conducting sensitive transactions, then you are better off using a secure wireless network or your phone's data network. Then poor reception also means poor security. That means the banking transaction or any other transaction could misfire. And poor reception uh, invites the chance that the data contained in your the transaction could misfire and be inter intercepted by another unauthorized third party. And of course, there's always the risk of losing somebody's losing a phone. If you someone were to lose the phone, then there's a lot at stake there. So uh, if, if the phone is unguarded without password or something, then a lot of mayhem can happen. Then another thing is that fraudulent apps. Fraudulent apps can completely deceive. So they can there uh, the risk of downloading fraudulent apps, especially not from the main stores, but elsewhere, and then the app creators can cause a lot of damage because they could uh, download. If, you, if you're using the uh, security settings to you essentially are compromising yourself in many ways than one, all the data could be siphoned off and the spoofing can happen, identity theft can happen, many things can happen. So those are some of the risks are, which are there. And uh, of course, on the threat side, the mobile malware is on rise. There are many things like from MRATs, as it is called, mobile remote access trojans. And there are premium dialers often hidden within the apps claiming to offer a lot of other information. And the mobile security reports, of course, is, uh, I mean, show that the threats are increasing by the day. And mobile threats are increasing by the day. And continuous smartphone authentication is another trend. It's becoming very common. 
Uh, so these are some of the approaches that we can do to in order to secure the apps. And also, uh, mobile phishing is getting more and more sophisticated. Uh, in a phone, there is a lot more than merely the stuff that is required for transaction. There are all your contact details. There could be personal photos. There could be a lot of other downloaded bank statements, your browsing information. Several things could be there which could be diverged off. And uh, there is a SIM card theft, which is a perennial risk. And privacy issues will increasingly impact enterprise mobile operations. So with several things, we have several things to cover. So let me start off with our first panelist, uh, Professor Pradeepti. What are your views on this? Hello, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Pradeepti. I'm an assistant professor at uh, CR Rao Advanced Institute of Mathematics, Statistics, and Computer Science. Uh, you're located in University of Hyderabad in Hyderabad. And uh, in our lab, we are working on uh, network security and mobile security related issues. And my domain is to see how we can solve problems in security using AI and machine learning techniques. So as part of this, we have recently started working on uh, Android application security. And we have done, we have done some work with special focus on financial applications and uh, what are the lacuna in the uh, security aspects of the uh, FinTech applications in the Android domain. So as part of that, uh, I have done some research and uh, uh, we have looked at the um, various uh, about uh, 115 applications which are there in the Android open market and we have done an in-depth security analysis of them. So based on our results, I'm here to talk today. So uh, thank you so much for inviting me in this panel and uh, yes, it's an honor you. to be among all of you. Oh yeah. So given that financial sector services has been extensively leaning on the mobile channel to deliver hyper-personalized services, what are some of the key cybersecurity risks pertaining to M-Finance? So uh, the normal ones which are there in the web applications are also persistent in uh, the mobile domain. Phishing attacks, like you mentioned a couple of them, sir, like uh, phishing attacks, malware, ransomware, weak password, inside inside a threat based attacks or DDoS attacks. But uh, there are a couple also more like which we do not talk about much is are the backdoors and the supply chain attacks and the third party vendor based attacks, which are uh, becoming very prominent now. So uh, the targeted attackers often use backdoor applications to obtain uh, remote access. Uh, maybe in the second or third stage of their attack phase, and uh, by using these uh, backdoors, they are uh, they are um, bypassing the uh, intrusion detection systems, and uh, uh, you know, they're using some some techniques like either uh, port binding or uh, connection uh, connect backing or you know abuse of connection availability, and uh, they are able to enter the system, and uh, eventually uh, they become a threat to the financial services. So including some uh, recent threats were seen on where financial institutions uh, realized that there are some suspicious DNS requests uh, while uh, processing some financial transactions. So uh, that is related to backdoor and uh, those kind of attacks. And also whenever we have some third party or uh, nowadays there are third party, fourth party vendors who are uh, used because of their uh, services that uh, the uh, the app user app developer wants to give to the app user so they intend to use to make their life a little more easier they use some third party vendors but these third party vendor applications are not thoroughly tested which leads to some security threats and uh, this is what we have observed that this has led to some financial uh, some flaws in these mobile apps that are using these kind of third party threats yes very well put so I'd like to turn to Mr. Manoj Nayak to get his views on this subject. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, so if you look at uh, today's uh, today's environment, cybersecurity environment, and also uh, before the before that IT environment. So after the financial inclusions uh, by the government of India, and and there is a speed to include all the citizens into the financial systems of the country so there, there has been a increase in the uses of the uh, digital platforms by the users or by the common people uh, and also another thing is the uses of the smartphones mobile devices has been increased 
so uh, if you look at two uh, two perspectives so increase in the uses of the smartphones and the increase in the inclusion financial inclusion of all the citizens into the uh, entire ecosystems so these two th systems these two things as you know given a benefit or you know uh, uh, given a benefit to all the financial institutions be it banks or insurance companies or mutual fund companies or any any of the financial uh, sector uh, companies like any brokers or uh, all these institutions they have started using the mobile applications in a extensive manner as compared to the web applications even some companies were using web application only web applications in fact they have also released the mobile version of those web applications so so it is a common phenomenon as the uses of the digital environment increases so as the digital risks also so 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 so, so that is the important factor the risk has been uh, multifolded in in recent years and also the pandemic has given another uh, 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 another benefit to the hackers um, for, for the you know, increasing the uh, increasing the attack scenarios and also the threat perceptions and threat environment has been changed so if you look at so what are those things in the mobile applications like basic things which attackers are taking advantage to uh, attack to those mobile applications or mobile systems if you look at is the basic thing is the unsecured uh, wifi so unsecured internet connections so and, and it is commonly said that if it is a public wifi network uh, network then there is a more chances may not be 100% chance but there are more chances of you know attacker getting into those uh, uh, wifi connections and and, and and then then also the spyware attacks the even in last few years we have seen uh, there has been Uh, you know increase in the spyware and spamming activities and phishing activities so which includes uh, the social in, uh, social engineering uh, threats uh, and 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 the other 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 things are the poor password habits of the uh, end users so the users who are using those systems financial uh, systems or mobile applications of the financial service sector um, most of the users do not keep the complex uh, password and by by virtue of keeping a poor password it is very easy for the attacker to get into the uh, users accounts or users uh, systems and also apart from that other things are added like uh, data leakage through malicious uh, applications which are easily downloadable into the mobile applications uh, all the users who are into the financial system it is very easy to understand the finance but it is really little bit of difficult for them to understand on the cyber security and impact of the threats into their day to day life so it is the awareness is also the another part so these are the mostly most all the cyber security threats which are there in for the mobile applications in today's life all right okay so i think you captured a number of things in in brief really that's very good so i'll just move on to the next uh, round of discussion in which we look at the pressing threats and vulnerabilities that are endangering the cyber security fabric of online financial applications and of course what are the key pitfalls and uh, lacunae uh, so here if we look at it there are a number of threats i mean mobile right from mobile banking applications being mapped to incorrect mobile numbers if there was some fraud in the entire paperwork and everything to creating a fake and non existent users on mobile services platforms and of course there's the sim swap related frauds uh, i mean fraud and also fake and similar apps which are deceptively looking the same uh, they can be downloaded and uh, uh, a lot of damage can be done and malware directly on the attacks through malware are there uh, of course people are there are being warned that they need to install antivirus even for mobile phones but very few people are doing it uh, in the smart smartphones and all that and data theft which is one of the big concerns this is privacy a loss more which can be used for personal benefits and mobile wallets are also very susceptible and there is the whole risk again another thing has come to light is that of money laundering because people use this mobile apps as a way of Uh, siphoning money into some other unauthorized, unaccounted money, 
right? Uh, I mean, different different bank accounts and unauthorized deductions from the wallets of uh, customers. So the merchant side, of, merchant side also, there is a failure to conduct proper due diligence. Okay, where if, for example, some fictitious goods, the customers are paying money, and cash can be rotated with minimum transaction fees and all that. So there is a lot, lot of fraud going on there, and auto log facility. Many of the things auto log off facility. So he opens on this, uses that, and instead of logging out, the mobile is stolen or some other apps are there which are siphoning off data from this, then those things can happen. So this demands that a lot of due diligence be applied across the spectrum, not only from the operational side where the user awareness and all are there, but right from the dev ops, where even the binaries that are being released into production, they need to be tested very thoroughly. So the question to you, uh, I'll start with uh, Professor Pradeep the first. vulnerabilities and engineering the uh, security fabric of online applications and for mobile application security testing what are the key pitfalls and lacunae in your opinion yes so um, basically static analysis has to be done like you said testing has to be done rigorously uh, from all surfaces and uh, uh, there are two aspects in whenever any mobile application is, uh, if there are any mobile app developers, they would agree with me that there are two uh, sets of uh, analysis, security analysis that have to be done, testing that has to be done whenever apps are, uh, you know, are given out in the market and uh, static analysis of the Android app, uh, you might know it involves the anal analyzing the source code of the application. Uh, majorly the structure of the code, the sequence of the statements and function calls uh, when it is not executing, that is when it's not in a run stage. And this is generally done, uh, we have done it uh, using some automated tools or by manual examination also sometimes it's possible to identify some loopholes. There are many open source tools also available for doing this in the market and of course paid versions are also there. They are statistically analyzing, uh, statically analyzing the code and the various uh, apps and initial static analysis usually uh, uh, is followed by a dynamic analysis. So this is done when the code is running on the APK, the mobile APK when it is running on any device, this is when we would do a dynamic analysis. Many a times it so happens that uh, static analysis does not give any uh, uh, cons, like does not show any cons of the application, but uh, when dynamic analysis is performed on the app, that is when it is in run stage, when the APK is running, on any uh, mobile device or the uh, test environment, dynamic analysis usually shows some uh, defects. So whenever the, the app is having any real-time uh, privacy leakages, any vulnerabilities or information logging is happening. Uh, so all this can be detected in the dynamic analysis stage and so it has to be done uh, properly. So the here in dynamic analysis, the app is properly scanned from uh, the outside of its uh, run state and uh, simulated user inputs are usually given to test out all the use cases. So if these two are not done, static analysis followed by a thorough dynamic analysis are not done, then uh, there are a lot of chances that many um, issues will creep in into the application when it is re released in real time. So uh, Android uh, for generally Android mobile applications, uh, Android itself has given out a certain uh, uh, areas in which we should focus on the security like uh, mostly android runs on permissions so the permission based analysis and android also has certain beautiful features like um, exporting of their uh, activities and intents and uh, uh, data storage so what happens if insecure uh, way of data storage is kept or how what happens if improper platform usage is done during the mobile development and all that so there are some, there are these OWASP uh, security, top 10 securities in mobile security, which if we follow when we are implementing, and uh, so all of us know about this, when it comes to real-time implementation, uh, mostly in a hurry to launch a product or something like that. So this I'm talking based on whatever research we have done. We have found this lacuna even in some well-known applications that some simple things have been missed out, which have been clearly laid out in the OWASP top 10. So everybody knows about them. Everybody preaches about them. But when we do come to implementing it in real time in a hurry, either to launch a product or, for, or maybe or some oversight, uh, some of these get missed. Yeah. Yes, yes, certainly. Sassed and dashed. 
uh, static analysis and dynamic analysis, they are very, very important. And of course, the move is to how to minimize this. So you had mentioned an interesting point about Android. The architecture of Android and iOS are two very different things. Where in, in Android, uh, uh, of course, in Apple, uh, it would land iOS, it would first land on the OS and then it would go to the application. Whereas in this, it lands in the app first and then goes to the uh, OS, so which makes it far more vulnerable. Not to mention the plethora and ever expanding variants of Android that are out there in the market with the mobile phone. That makes, I mean, humanly possible, for example, huge investment because somebody could be holding, a, holding an old version of a phone and he will not download upgrades to that phone. So whenever we are there, let's say you're doing something and uh, on mobile apps, then we do not know which version of OS is holding, which version of the app is holding, whether he has upgraded or not. And then you expect that to be secure or how his mobile phone is already compromised, right? Uh, in iOS, it's a little bit more this thing secure, but in Android, depending on the variant, it could be the experience could vary. Okay, so that is it. A good point brought out, really. Now, Manoj, I'd like to turn to you for your opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so both both of you have uh, as, uh, as brought in very you know very interesting things. So, Dr. Sriram, like you have told about the frauds which has been happening nowadays uh, in the mobile applications, and Professor Pradipti also. Um, has uh, has given the feedback what she found in their research and uh, so if you look at you know if you go a little bit further so uh, and if you try to find out the root cause so uh, why why so many frauds are being happening so uh, and and everybody knows there is a uh, WAPS top 10 or WAPS vulnerabilities for mobile application which is open source uh, uh, and so everybody knows it's an open web application security project. It is free of cost. So any developer can get into the website, can you know uh, look at it, and and everybody knows. I'm sure that everybody knows about it. But but still, uh, there are vulnerabilities, and 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 also the attackers are uh, exploiting, are able to exploit those vulnerabilities, and that's why the security incidents or frauds are being being happening. So 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 if you look at the go to the root so the most important is the security by design so when we design a mobile applications whether we are considering the security whether we are considering all the aspects of the financial transactions that would be happening through that mobile applications and in in each of these transactions and in each of these process that is involved in these transactions what are the security requirements and Considering those security requirements, then we need to build or develop that applications. So this is the most important thing that security by design a developer must consider. And also nowadays, since privacy has taken a very important uh, uh, things in our day-to-day -day life, and uh, uh, there are lots of regulations has coming in, and India is also getting into those regulations along with the security by design we also need to look at the privacy by design so privacy by design why we are talking nowadays because privacy is, is becoming very important and, and and there are so much of personal information that are getting stored into the mobile applications whether at the client side or at the uh, server side and if you look at uh, the what are the uh, mostly known vulnerabilities also which are getting uh, getting uh, exploited by the attackers so one is the brute force attacks so uh, let's say uh, the mobile applications may not have the uh, protection sufficient protection for the uh, brute force uh, attacks and also the authorization so insufficient authorizations it is a uh, again it is a server side issue for the mobile applications and if we combine the insufficient authorization with the arbitrary code execution the attacker can take control of the entire mobile application environment of the company so so the de developers need to look at these pressing threats and also then design the applications so apart from this authentication authorization and the uh, other aspects also the another thing is the encryptions so so when this financial transaction is getting happened or if any like authentication information is getting transmitted over the mobile network whether it is getting properly encrypted and and, and this 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 encryption keys 
are uh, so, so should not be broken by the uh, attackers that is another important aspect so we need to look at uh, what is the key sites and how we are managing those uh, keys of those uh, encryptions so th these are the some of the threats and some of the vulnerabilities uh, are getting exploited exploited by the attackers and has to be looked at at the design stage then the second part of uh, uh, your question dr sriram so uh, how how the testing should be carried out yes professor pradipti has uh, you know uh, given a very uh, uh, descriptive things we need a dynamic security testing as well as the uh, static security testing and and the uh, i i also completely agree with professor pradipti the one when the application is getting developed the source code of the application should get tested and it should be tested in automated manner so if you look at it why in spite of knowing the risks threats the vulnerabilities why there is a mistake in the uh, uh, mistake mistake while developing the application or or moving the application into production environment because everybody is running behind the schedule and and there is a time to market so so much of competition is there uh, today in the today's market everybody wanted to move their product to the market in a very less time so so the if you look at the development team and the testing team also gets less time to do to their activity but but, but nevertheless we, we should not whatever the time to go to the market but we we, we must do the integrations of the development environment with the uh testing environment so that the automated uh, testing can be happen at the source code level and once the source code is compiled apk file is created the dynamic testing has to be done so both the testings can combinedly give us if there is any vulnerability still remain uh, which which has not been patched or which has not been taken care by the developer and after it is you know observed in the testing then probably the developer can look at it and rectify it. Definitely. Thank you, uh, uh, Manoj, uh, for those words and uh, I mean, touching on many aspects. I now come to your talked about, uh, I mean, security in design or security by design. So how should developers go about embedding security as part of design development and testing? And if you were to come up with a robust governance framework for securing mobile applications, what should be the key tenets and pillars of such a framework? And uh, I urge you to keep it brief in interest of time. We have only a few minutes left and Babita has also joined. So I would uh, like to start with Babita first because she didn't get a chance to speak. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I can't hear you. Yeah. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah, a little louder, please. Yeah, uh, now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. So when it comes to mobile security, I'm just uh, I want to give a brief other than that of the question. Like uh, whenever we are deploying a, a mobile application, it is need to be when it is not only for a mobile application. Every application should be secured by design. That that is the key behind every security. But the challenge we see in the mobile application is because it has been used by the uh, customers who doesn't know anything about the app or the intention of the app or how it need to be used. During this pandemic time, if you see the mobile application usage has gone to more than 97 percentage and the cyber frauds also has increased, but it is not because of the flaws in the application. It is due to the literacy of the people, how to use the app and how can be used or how we can secure that. And this app is been deployed in the mobiles, which are vulnerable, which might be having any other uh, device, uh, any other softwares, which do some mal activities in that. And from that, it, they are hijacking the credentials of the customers. And that has been used for getting in uh, making use of this uh, mobile so that the main concern when it comes to fintech mobile apps is that it is not an antivirus or anything which can identify that the system which in which it has been installed whether it have any malware or anything a simple pro thing i will tell you about 97 percentage of the frauds which has happened through upi or mobile app or anything is just because 
they the users are either sharing their otp to the customers or the any dust kind of uh, screen sharing apps has been installed in the customer's mobile and through which they are people are taking the credentials and so oh, when it comes to application security the main thing is when we are developing the application we should ensure that the uh, application should have the capability to analyze the environment where it is working to see if any screen sharing is enabled the app should be able to it should it should not work or even ask for a credential to log in it suddenly have to sh uh, shut down that application and give a message that uh, your since the system is vulnerable with the app is not working so that kind of literacy should be that once it happens like that even without the knowledge of the application user we can bring the security into the practice and later on they will also start an analyzing that these kind of applications should not be there and they will start uninstalling this application unless and until they have that whatever because you know every lock has a key whatever security measures we are implementing there there will be a loophole which will be getting into it that is why awareness is always more important then coming back to the secure by design concept of the application uh, dash and sas definitely we have to follow OAP top 10 vulnerability scan need to be done all those things are preliminary things now even we have to go for an uh, authentication where it is is uh, like uh, uh, not only the two factor authentication adaptive authentication we have to go for where other than uh, passwords or a m pin uh, based on the behavioral pattern of the user we have to identify that the user is the right person who is getting into the system so now technologies are you uh, this ai ml everything user behavior analysis all this will take a learning phase that is the main challenge which we are facing right now but in near future since we all are working on it uh, definitely we will come up with a system wherein user based analysis will be one of the factors we cannot consider as because there are be lot of um, uh, false positives will be one of the factors in identifying the or authenticating the uh, uh, right users and we have to make use of these technologies well in advance and rog application the vendors should make sure that rog application is not available on the website if at all it is there we have need to take necessary measures to bring that down and uh, the storage encryption instead of going for the common encryption if we can come up with some mm, logic of our own that will help us to encrypt the trans application data which is there in the system and uh, and uh, TLS 1.2 and above, which we normally uh, say that we are, every application should be encrypted with at least TLS 1.2 and above. But inside the application itself, the data should be encrypted with a different algorithm, which is not easily available in the market, so that uh, the uh, fraudsters find it difficult to decrypt the data. So the basic principle for hiding the data is at rest, in motion, or in use, the data should be encrypted. How far we are able to ensure that that is the next challenge and above all there are a lot of intermediaries who are working in the system the like payment gateway a people and uh, all others how the how they are taking care of the security aspects or whether all these people are following the necessary security measures then coding we should ensure that uh Manoj sir was telling about the coding practice best coding practices we should definitely get an integrity certificate from the vendor stating that the code is not being taken from um, source code uh, uh, repositories like GitHub and all. Because there are many cases wherein it might be leading to some other website and we, without our knowledge itself, the data will be leaked from the source code itself. So oh, there's the integrity because it is now we are relying on a third party report. How far we can rely on a third party report? It depends upon the uh, expertise these people are having in auditing. And when we are doing the vulnerability assessment, there also oh, there are lack of information or lack of skill set to analyze this vulnerability. A hacker can do it better than a normal person. So that is the main concern here when it always comes to vulnerability assessment. Whatever we are following is definitely the best practice that we have to follow. Now we are following the SANS 20 also. And a uh, lot of things we can talk, but uh, due to the scarcity of time, I'm just uh, uh, stopping now. And if anything more, I have to specifically talk about, so you can uh, definitely ask me. Oh, thanks a lot, Babita. A uh, lot of points covered uh, across the board, really. 
And uh, so I would now turn to Pradeepti for her views. And uh, I, I would just uh, uh, keep in mind that, uh, I mean, basically what's, what's being highlighted here is, what's required here is a multi-pronged approach that will give us a holistic uh, a framework to security rather than a case-by-case -case piecemeal fragmented approach. And of course, a greater compliance with all the industry regulations and also uh, something like active threat detection is required uh, because you should be able to even uh, find zero day threats or whatever it is based on AI, ML, whatever it is, it, it needs to be there. And greater encryption and authorization management is required. Also, it needs to be scaling up in the sense at, of end user growth and all these things need to be taken into account. And many a times things need to be automated and we can't 100% rely on saying that the user will be aware or so. Otherwise, we would be badly beating ourselves up. Uh, many of the things, they would simply not take it because security becomes too heavy or they need to remember too much, right? So how it happens silently behind the screens and in a transparent manner is also the user experience is very important. So I'd like to turn to Professor Pradeepti yes. on this uh, aspect of, uh, yes, how should we embed security as part of uh, design development and testing, part of DevSecOps, or security by design, and if there were a go robust governance framework for securing mobile applications, what would be the key tenets and pillars of that framework? So I definitely feel that um, mobile application testing uh, should be considered a totally separate thing than web application testing, and because there are certain special uh, specialities in the mobile world when we compare it to the web application testing, the mobile app binaries are not sitting behind any firewall like the web apps would be and uh, there is no built-in SSL also. So the securing network communication and data storage and uh, the data transfer in mobile apps is more complex than it is in the web world, web app world. And uh, because our code is running on someone else's device and there is a much larger attack surface uh, and uh, if can compare to our code running on a server. So where you have a control, you have firewalls and uh, all those sorts of things. In the mobile devices, already lots of information is present and uh, uh, the user private information is present and uh, through the browser also a lot of information can be collected. So mobile devices can go with us anywhere. So uh, there is some misconception around mobile app security uh, that, uh, like I was telling, static analysis alone is needed, but uh, mobile app security deserves a more... Uh, more than that so it deserves more than that and uh, i feel that uh, we have to go for an approach where we are doing more on device security testing so we have to go for a more on device security testing and completely analyze the data storage and flow of data and uh, the various uh, apis that are involved in this and uh, uh, more fine grained source code analysis has to be done like ma'am was also talking about it and even Manoj are also telling about that so more fine grained source code analysis has to be done and uh, the important premise to the entire idea is that we should make sure that we vet the mobile apps thoroughly ahead of time so that uh, when they go to the user environment uh, they are able to uh, withstand any attack or any malware intrusion that happens. Thank you, Professor Pradeepti. Or to Manoj, would like yeah. your comments on uh, this. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we spoke on the different uh, testing methodologies and how, how granular testing is required for the mobile applications. Like uh, uh, it has been beautifully explained by Mrs. Babita and Professor Pradeepti. Uh, the another aspect I would like to say the governance part, which you have uh, spoken, Dr. Sriram. So the governance is the one, the most important, not one of the most, it's most important pillar in the uh, cyber security governance, in our cyber security area. Uh, without governance, you know, no, no, nothing moves. And also the, in the, in the uh, organizations or corporates, uh, every, everybody follows the corporate governance and uh, they, they have to adhere to the company's uh, act and other uh, regulatory frameworks where the government is said in a very beautiful and uh, in a very detailed manner. So the cyber security governance, if we look at it also, we have a cyber security framework from the uh, NIST, which talk about the uh, 
uh, identify, protect, detect, uh, respond, and uh, recover. So, uh, so where the matured organizations, the old organizations, we must identify uh, the assets. So, if you cannot identify the assets, probably you will not able to implement the uh, security uh, processes or security technologies into uh, the applications. And uh, that is one thing. And once we identify, then we have to try to uh, protect it. And also, protection is not sufficient. Looking at the increased attack surface, uh, the detection is also most important. And, and sometimes it may happen knowingly or unknowingly. Uh, we have to move the applications or changes to the production environment, even though there is a vulnerability. Uh, sometimes we accept the vulnerability uh, without knowing its uh, impacts. So the detection methodology uh, there will play an important role if the attacker is trying to uh, get into the systems or uh, try to uh, do some malicious uh, things in the system so that we can we can respond. We'll have sufficient time to respond uh, to the attack in a uh, appropriate manner. So the in in the, in the response mechanisms, in fact. Uh, 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 NIST is able to uh, create lots of awareness among the corporates. Uh, the response mechanism also we should have the uh, play, play, playbooks for everyone in the organization. So we should have tabletop exercise uh, uh, carried out uh, by involving all the departments, uh, not only IT, also corporate communications department and uh, HR department, legal department. So uh, if there is an attack, how it should be uh, uh, responded by the company, um, uh, which, which is also most uh, important thing. And, and they recover. So if, if there is an attack, if there is a uh, data exploitation, uh, or if there is a ransomware uh, attack, then how, how should we recover it? So uh, perhaps we should also look at the uh, business continuity, ITDR, uh, all those uh, aspects. And, and, and going back to this is a very generic uh, thing and going back to the mobile applications uh, we all know like uh, the software development life cycle is being followed for all type of applications so we should have a robust uh, secure software development life cycle so i'm just adding another s um, before the stlc for the mobile applications secure stlc approach and also the uh, once the secure stlc approach takes the secure by design and privacy by design aspects into the considerations and uh, defining the security requirements into the business requirement specifications and then implementing in, in the testing. So te testing sometimes takes a uh, most amount of the time actually. So, so how the we should move into the automated testing. So the developer's environment should be integrated with the source code platform so that the automated testing can be done. And the developers also should be provided, empowered with the tools and technologies so that they can do a self-assessment. Once they develop a uh, aspect or develop a changes into the applications or a new applications, they should be empowered to test that application whether it is vulnerable free. So, so then, then it should go to the testing team as a second line function or as a security team as a second line function so that over and above the self-assessment, they can do a more rigorous testing to find out if there is any vulnerability is there which can be exploited by the attackers. So these are the more or less governance structure and the life cycle of the mobile applications which we should follow. Yes, sir. very well put, Manoj. So. I'd like to, I mean, summarize a few things. Uh, basically, what's required is a far more rigorous approach than what we have now uh, for the mobile app world, because that is a far more complex world that recognition needs to come. And the flip side of things is I'm seeing that many startups are shying away from the mobile world at all, saying it's too complex. It can be full of security loopholes. We would get sued. Our customers will suffer. And they're completely shying away from the thing which customers can use heavily and they, they would be very happy to use because mobile is something that they turn to very often. So in order to do that, there is, here is a great opportunity, in fact, okay, uh, for app developers, things like zero code, low code, no code, and which are secure code, all these things in order to develop mobile apps itself, that process needs to be built simplified and secured far more than the non normal apps. So that's an opportunity. Several companies could crop up 
several startups could crop up in which they say that we will provide you a framework in which you can develop mobile apps happily, securely, safely. And then there are also similar frameworks for uh, testing it. Like he said, automated testing and doing all that sort of things. So this is one aspect, the DevSecOps strengthening it. And the second part of the puzzle is that regulations. The regulations need to be very tight that have you obtained before you rolled out mobile app, did you really test it thoroughly? Certifications need to be there. And if supposing major frauds or thrifts or uh, problems are found there, they should be able to catch hold of them and say, what certification did you do before you rolled it out? That needs to be more stringent than for desktop web apps and all those things. So, so that is the thing. Because at the moment, since privacy laws are not yet rolled out in many countries, there is a lot of malpractice going on. There is, there are the data is completely getting siphoned off. Number one, okay, and uh, even when the app is not switched on, even when you are not opened the app, also at night, two o'clock, three o'clock, you can detect traffic. It has been tested and measured. Okay, all the data is being siphoned off and sent to 50, 60, 70 different websites around the world, 30, 40 of which are in China, Hong Kong, Singapore, etc. Okay. And you can't do anything about it because at the time when you install the app, you tick that little box which said uh, uh, you can share. It will share the data with all partners and affiliates. Okay, so if hopefully <laughs> when the protection data protection laws come in, <laughs> there'll be more teeth to the law, and then there'll be more stringent compliances saying that are you compliant with this? Are you doing that? There is also a level of uh, what you call fatigue, <laughs> what you call consent fatigue saying that you look at long list of things and you say yes and once it is in it can take your photos it can take your contact details it can take read your uh, all your sms's and know right from your salary to every credit card transaction that you've done to so many other things right so uh, ba based on all of these a plethora of things i mean and and of course there is the whole thing of this educating the user and all that but one cannot rely only on that a lot of intelligence has to be embedded at the back end and on the mobile phone so that is there. So one has to take into account a number of things. So mobile world certainly is interesting. Uh, it's it's very convenient and also uh, it's very promising, uh, but it also carries a lot of things with it, hidden things with it, like the proverbial iceberg. So the, these are the things I, I hope for the audience. All these takeaways were very useful. And feel free to contact the, the people and DSCI. DSCI has been running a number of programs. And uh, apart from this session also, urge everyone else to attend the other uh, FinSec forum sessions also. Uh, so stay tuned. There's a lot coming in the mobile world. And certainly this is not the last, last word on the subject. It's an evolving field. Uh, standards are being written. Frameworks are uh, being fleshed out. And also I mean, a lot of uh, softwares are coming for testing and for a lot of research is going on. So with that, uh, I would like to wrap up this session and uh, hand it back to the team. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Shah. I think there are two questions. Also, I had a query. Uh, there are a few questions on the chat uh, regarding data privacy by design uh, comes at what stage? There's a question by Sandeep and by Anita and by Charan. Are we able to quickly, you know, go uh, take, uh, take a few of them if possible? Certainly. It's uh, what's your view on implementation of a password-less approach, right? So it's right. becoming more facial recognition, behavior, uh, behavioral biometrics, and so on. I'd like to throw it open to the panel. Anyone would like to take that? Yeah, that is what uh, I was also mentioning in my uh, talk. That is adaptive authentication. It is a passwordless authentication, wherein we'll be considering the user behavior analysis. We'll be taking 10, 15 characteristics of a particular user. And based on that, uh, authentication will be done. So it is purely user behavior analysis technique, which has been used for the implementation, which is in the primitive stage right now, because uh, it takes some time for the system to learn, because almost six months, minimum six months is required for the learning phase. And once the learning phase is complete, definitely we can go for such kind of approaches, which will help to, and I will always suggest that uh, uh, it will should be only one part of the authentication. We should not get rid of the whole thing as and we'll simply go on, go on with the user behavior analysis alone because many a times you have come with, it with uh, fingerprints itself. If a person is dead, it, you cannot even open his mobile if, uh, if the finger even if it is locked with the fingerprint. 
so all those challenges are also there so we should uh, wisefully choose the uh, methodology and uh, for that we should be very cautious but security always stands first so based on the data which is there and the, how the security need to be implemented based on that we can definitely take a call hope i have answered and this question yep krishan good good yeah, so it was Sorry, sorry, Another sorry. one was, uh, so I am reading the question. So if you take a well-defined AppSec approach, then most of these challenges can be addressed. Uh, security follows the developer community and automated remediation can help developer to fix this at day one. Sast and Dast could be at the latter stage of the cycle. Would like your views on this approach, sir. Yeah, one point yeah correct. So I am not aware whether there is automated remediation Uh, can be you know found out it's not you know like a, a vulnerability scanning and then you know patching the vulnerabilities uh, and which are already published so so the vulnerability in the mobile application also the which are published so known vulnerabilities are the part of uh, uh, waps uh, waps uh, top 10 and other waps vulnerabilities um, but but the dast in fact helps so dynamic security testing and static security testing so i am again reiterate so if the developer environment is integrated with the source code uh, review applications then at each line or each code that is written by the developers so if the line or if the code is vulnerable then then the, the application the source code applications gives an alert and gives a recommendations to the developer how it should be corrected so it is it is a process so once the developer will be into this process for 2 to 3 months automatically the developer will understand how to write a secure code and how the vulnerabilities you know cannot be part of his code which he is being writing so, yes. so so that is the best approach of the remediation automated remediation of those vulnerabilities Absolutely. and and one thing i'd just like to add is that the uh, users need to download the patches and keep their Uh, application up to date otherwise no matter how many remediations yes, yes. are done those there there's not a uptake of the patches <laughs> there needs to be somehow forced into taking the latest one <laughs> okay so yeah. here one more point which i would like to highlight is sir uh, when it comes to mobile apps it should be more security need to be done at the client end rather than at the server as uh, told by pradeep tip madam that it is uh, fully the source code is residing in our app and whatever security we have to give we have to give it there itself we we shouldn't even ask to come and hit into our server to check for it so uh, that level of security we have to build in we have to come up with a covering security measures wherein even an antivirus kind of thing also works in this uh, solution it checks for whether any malware or anything of that kind is residing in that app even the solution should not open so we have to design a solution at such a way that at the client and in itself the sec all the necessary security measures need to be taken right wait right there uh i think we are running out of time so quickly i like to thank everyone for gracing us with your presence dr shiram thank you so much for uh, so elegantly summarizing the session mr manoj mr pradeep team and pavita thank you for valuable insights were very actionable and also informative thank you so much for uh, adding so much value for this particular session and once again i'd like to thank you all for joining us in uh, for this fintech um, uh, event and please stay tuned for the sessions you can also look around for other key interesting topics of your interest and uh, yep and following this we'll be going on to uh, the lunch break in the uh, auditorium there would be a networking session ha happening parallelly please feel free to join that and yes i think more or less uh, that's about we come to the conclusion of the session thank you so much thank you thanks everyone thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone.